Well, good morning. Should be the last day of our working on the uh, septic system before inspection tomorrow. And uh, this is Dinah, of course. I'm trying to start Dinah. It's been several days since Dinah's been run, and we've had some below freezing temperatures. So uh, she's a little hard starting this morning. So I thought I would try this trick. Um, I don't have a block warmer for this. But um, I do have some coals from the wood stove. I just set it below the engine and I'm letting it, uh, you know, letting the heat waft up around the engine a little bit. Um, watching it carefully. It's not so hot that I can't put my hand there, you see. I can put my hand there. But I just want to be safe. I don't want to cause a fire or anything. I just want to get some heat there. So I'll let this go for 15 minutes or a half hour and get Dinah started. I'm Robert. Egypt is down in the leach field and we're going to finish the last little bit of leach field pipe. We worked on some of the other pipe yesterday and I ended up breaking part of it because it was it was so cold so we have to be more careful about that but anyway that's what we're doing today. This way. Okay, we finished this leech field part. Now we're going to go up the line. Uh, did you bring the saw? Because yeah. For one last connection. Because we have one last connection to make, and then we'll be mostly done with it. <laughs> There's Robert freezing to death and struggling up the hill. Here's the finished septic tank with the manhole risers in. I also installed a clean out there. And a clean out there. So in case we ever need to snake the uh, system, we can do that. But obviously that's going to run toward the house. And uh, didn't code doesn't require me to put a clean out here, but I did because we have over 80 linear feet of trenching that curves and drops and curves and drops and curves and drops. And uh, I mean they're 45 degree angles elbows, but Still, just in case, it'd be nice to have a clean out there in case you need to, in case something gets stopped up. And I also bedded the efflu uh, effluent pipe. Um, this area you might think is, you know, pretty close to the surface of the ground. Well, I plan on building this up. This pipe needs to be buried at least three feet 
no problem getting three feet over there, but it shrinks. The distance shrinks as you get over here. Um, if I can't get it up to three feet because it looks odd or whatever, I will fill that. I'll cover that with some uh, closed cell foam insulation, also called blue board, which is uh, which you can bury. I'll put it over top and around that section right there just to protect against freezing if need be. But I think I'm going to build this up because it's coming off the front of the house, this area. I'm going to build this up a little bit. And then, of course, uh, the rest of this will be okay. And then we get short again as we get over there. Again, either build up or put in some blue board. And coming down here. We just bedded the pipe in, as you can see. Just watering it, filling it in with a hose. And then watering it in to, you know, compact it. And then compact it. Just watered it in and then compacted it. We gave a little bit of support to our pipes coming off of the distribution box over here temporarily till the inspector can see it and, you know, confirm it's how he likes it. And then uh, we did something in the distribution box as well. Okay. So the engineer was out here and he came, he uh, made some recommendations. The county inspector is due to be here tomorrow and so he uh i should say kind of winded from climbing the hill the engineer was out here the other day for his inspection the county inspector called said his truck broke down and won't be able to be out here till tomorrow that was last week but uh in the meantime it gave me a chance to work on some things that the engineer uh, said needed to be done one was to install two clean outs here i only had one and the reason for that was i couldn't find a, a double clean out but i'm supposed to have two one that cleans out the pipe going that way one that cleans out the pipe going that way and as you can see that's what i did i just installed two of these long sweep 90 degree elbows for clean outs. Now, this is the way to do it. Had I turned these backwards, in other words, with the sweep going that way and the sweep going that way, there would have been a small area in the middle that you would never be able to reach to clean out. And so that's why this one goes that way and that one goes that way. So cap on there to cap it off uh, uh, temporarily until we hook it up to the house eventually. And then uh, I went through and bedded the pipe that is uh, i threw dirt underneath it after making sure that the slope was correct uh, so that the pipe would stay in place of course as you're uh, as you're getting ready to uh, to refill the trenches it won't you know move the pipe and this being loose sand mostly i thought the most effective way to uh, compact this soil because it just won't compact if it's dry is to water it in and so that's what i've done i've watered it in I uh, rinsed off the top of the septic tank as best I could in case the county inspector wants to look at it. I also went ahead and extended my handle for that filter clean out. So you'll have to stick your head way down in there to pull it out. I also am running some water down the effluent pipe, both to rinse it out because I know it's got some dirt in it. But also for another reason, which I'll show you at the bottom. So one of the things that the engineer said we were missing that I went ahead and got and installed are speed levelers. Um, I saw it on the engineer's recommendation, but I wasn't sure what they were. I thought maybe this box had some kind of leveling thing that came with it. Uh, but it doesn't, and in fact, this box is really hard to level, um, which is, I guess, why uh, he and he uh, included these speed levelers. Um, these are these yellow things right here that are covering the ends of the pipe, and as you can see, they're just a piece of plastic that snaps into the bottom of the pipe. They have a hole in there that's on an eccentric. Um, it's not centered. 
And uh, so what it does is it it allows you in case either the box levels or one of these, you know, something shifts over time, allows you to get down in here and actually level out the uh, amount of flow so that the amount of flow to pipes is even. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now is I'm sort of turning these to make sure they all go the way they're supposed to. So you just turn them until you get them the way you want and everything's level. That's kind of a cool idea. But uh, yeah, these are pretty easy to install. You just simply push them right in. So that's one thing that needed to be done. Now I can put the rest of the risers up here. And uh, now I know that I'm getting even flow to all of the chamber rows. Another thing that we did is on these uh, inspection riser pipes, we drilled some uh, small eighth inch holes, four of them, at the top of each pipe underneath the cap. That allows a little bit of oxygen into this system. And I guess that helps with uh, breakdown or ventilation or, you know, whatever. There it is. Uh, let's, uh, the engineer who designed the system um, agreed with our changes and is, because we had some minor changes, and is coming up with a new drawing that needs to be submitted to the county and the state. Uh, and so he'll deliver that to the county, probably give us a copy. And then uh, the county guy is coming out tomorrow to give us our inspection, hopefully our approval. But seeing as how the engineer already came out here and told us what we needed to fix and get ready for him, I don't think there'll be a problem. I uh, just finished adding, building up some soil here because I know that it's low. There's my grade stake there next to the orange flag that tells me uh, how high I've got to be. So I'll spread this dirt around and uh, flatten it out. But uh, there are my clean outs. Here's the, t here's the top of the inlet tank. And there's the affluent tank. So ground level will be even with the top of this tank and then sloping from there down a foot down to this one uh, there's my second clean out and then my affluent line goes down the hill down there it's clouding up i don't know if you can see those clouds uh, almost hitting the ground out there that's snow on its way so i'm not going to be able to uh finish smoothing this out but i did manage to get it covered and that'll help a lot. Uh, here's the leach field. And there's the distribution box. I've got to smooth this over and level it out um, all the way down now. You'll notice I just piled dirt up. I pushed it over as far as I could without driving over the leach field. I don't want to cause any damage. And then I've got to get in here and pull out this vegetation that's uh, in the soil toss it over there or something and uh, then smooth this out make it nice and level uh, so we got a proper leach field here but uh, yeah so you know with that I'll just call this video series a, an end <laughs> I mean you guys don't need to see me smooth this out and no telling how soon it'll be before I can actually get to it because when the snow gets here and there should be several inches of it It'll be followed by hard freezes uh, and some sunlight, which will uh, cause some of it to soak into the ground. And then the soil freezes, and then it's really hard to hit with a shovel. So, um, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll get it done as uh, quickly as we can. But uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you got any questions or comments, leave them in the in the down below the description. Anyway, thanks a lot.